Today, we are going to talk about the life of a planet. We cannot understand the cosmos unless we understand the planets as living beings and the cosmos at large as a living system. The planetary spheres each have a specific life wave or pattern of life which creates a kind of personality or archetypal significance in relation to the Earth. The Earth and humanity are spiritually connected to the celestial bodies, so our soul or energy body is actually connected to the planets in the solar system. Each planet has a life cycle, just like a human being, and our world is not solid but rather shifts in density over long periods of time. These periods of time are called ages or yugas. In total, there are four ages and every age is distinct because it encompasses a different level or grade of consciousness. This consciousness becomes the overall condition of the planet at large and also of humanity. Thus humanity changes as they move through these ages. In the Eastern tradition, the ages from heaviest or densest to lightest are the Kali Yuga, the Dwarpara Yuga, the Treta Yuga, the Satya Yuga. The yugas are also recorded based on metals or mineral consciousness. So going from the darkest period or densest period to the lightest using metals, they are called the Iron Age, which is the Kali Yuga. The second age would be the Bronze Age. The third is the Silver Age. And the lightest is called the golden age. When humanity is in the darkest age, the iron age or Kali Yuga, humanity is one quarter spirit and three quarters matter. In this period, we forget that we are divine. We feel removed from the spiritual life and our order in the cosmos. We don't really see ourselves as connected to anything or anyone. And we are in that period now. When humanity begins to ascend and enters into the Bronze Age, we are half spirit and half matter, so slightly less dense than in the Iron Age. By the time we get to the Silver Age, we are three quarters spirit and one quarter matter. And when we reach the Golden Age, we are fully spirit 
and in Earth's least dense cycle of development. This cycle of the yugas in total takes just over 4 million years and provides the mechanism for spiritual evolution in the cosmos. You may be wondering if other planetary spheres in the solar system experience the same kind of shifts, the same kind of ages, and they do. We tend to be very Earth-centric, but every planet also has a life cycle where they move through different densities, just like the Earth. So, as density shifts, the cosmos around us also shifts. We are not in a closed system here on Earth, but part of an interconnected ecosystem of life in our solar system. While the planets may go through different kinds of shifts at different times, they are all developmentally interconnected. In this way, our solar system is kind of like a clock. Each planet becomes an interlocking gear in the overall development of the solar system. At no point is a cosmic body separate from the greater solar consciousness. This interconnectedness of the planetary spheres or the planets with the Earth is not always obvious, especially when we are in that Iron Age, that Kali Yuga, where humanity forgets that there are higher levels of reality. However, it's important to remember that the Earth communicates or overlaps with other planetary spheres and there can be a transmission or exchange in consciousness at certain periods of time. For example, when the Earth enters its Silver Age, it becomes visible to planets and beings that are within the astral plane, and enmeshing with these higher worlds begins to occur in a much more obvious physical way. Energies and beings from a planet that is within that spectrum of the overall astral plane can potentially descend upon the Earth. This is a different dynamic than Earth's current condition. As the Earth has not yet entered into the Silver Age, and is too dense to participate in this kind of direct contact. This is why many consider Earth to be in a kind of quarantine, prison, or generally cordoned off from the rest of the cosmos. This is also why the cosmos seems dead around us. While Earth is in the Kali Yuga Iron Age, it is too heavy and dense to deeply enmesh with the outer worlds, the outer spheres. It sinks into a period of spiritual isolation, and the effect is that humanity must develop a deep sense of spirituality to carry them through the transitions back into the higher planes. In turn, when we enter the less dense ages of the silver and golden eras on our planet, our cultures begin to completely shift, creating the civilizations of the golden age or high advanced spiritually realized civilizations. During this time, lifespans increase even up to thousands of years and the size of the human form increases as well. Human beings can be spanning up to over 30 feet around the time of the Golden Age. Thus, these higher ages can also be seen as ages of malleability or intense plasticity, meaning that the human being changes form naturally with the shifting of the ages and the shifting of density as the Earth moves into the higher realms. 
Along with these shifts is a process of initiation through spiritual beings. Human beings from a higher sphere come to the earth to help human beings integrate the shifting energies. It is very challenging to be exposed to increasing cosmic rays, such as when the earth begins to rise into a higher spiritual plane. And thus, certain individuals and groups will come to the planet and act out of service to help humanity adjust. These beings were seen as angels or gods in the past. These beings can come as pure spiritual forms and actually merge with different people working through them. This was the case in the Lemurian and Atlantean times, and this is what the priest and priestess classes strive to do, to connect with these higher beings and channel wisdom and inspiration through them. Rudolf Steiner reveals in his lectures that advanced initiates from the planetary spheres of our solar system would penetrate the earth in order to assist mankind. In Atlantis, the seven oracles that made up the priestly classes were representatives of the various planetary spheres. He made special mention of a class of angel called the Archai that descended directly from Venus during the Lemurian Epoch, and that archangels from the Mercurial Sphere or the Mercury Sphere directly guided Atlanteans. So various planetary spheres overlap with the Earth and send their highest initiates over periods of time. On rare occasions, people from other worlds can come from a higher sphere through the center of the Earth for a period of time to directly assist mankind. A sacred process of initiation can occur where one highly initiated individual can work on the astral and etheric body of certain human beings who are ready to be initiated into a higher consciousness. This occurred particularly in the earlier phases of humanity. At no point do these initiations or shifts in our forms as a result of spiritual initiations involve the harvesting of DNA or the physical changing of one's DNA. What I'm speaking about is not hybridization, but a process of deep spiritual initiation that actually changes one's physical form. This is a spiritual process that creates a physical transformation. These higher humans did not create mankind. They simply help humanity transform themselves as they move through periods of integration and change. As mentioned, this process of cyclical planetary evolution belongs to all planets in our solar system. All planets in the solar system go through ages of increasing and decreasing density, and all planets move through a series of seven consecutive incarnations, or seven globes. As the planet moves through these cycles, there are periods of rest and rebirth. The period of rest for a planetary body is called a cosmic night, or in the Eastern tradition, a prelea. This means that the planet is integrating all of the activity of its last life cycle and thus preparing to birth a new life wave and begin the process again. During the rest cycle of a planet, it will appear dead and have no life impulse it will pull itself completely inward. It will emit no planetary chi, and there will be no resonance that allows life to live upon it in a natural fashion, in a natural rhythm. At this time, Mars, to us, is in its rest period. It is recovering from a period of life. 
According to the fundamentals of esoteric philosophy, Mars, relative to the Earth, has just finished its third globe and is preparing to enter its fourth and most dense stage of life. Mars, being a sphere of its own, has its own codes of life and even its own humans that represent the overall consciousness of the sphere or human beings, human forms that embody the consciousness of the sphere. These would be called Martians. The Earth, by comparison, is in its fourth globe out of seven and much more dense overall than Mars. In fact, Earth is the densest planet in our system. Only when the Earth enters its sixth and seventh globes will it be able to physically perceive certain higher realms of the cosmos and even certain higher planetary spheres. These teachings are not new. They are the teachings of our ancestors, who had incredible knowledge of not only astronomy, but also the higher dimensional connection the Earth has with higher worlds that is represented in the celestial bodies. This tradition originated in Atlantis, or during what was called the Atlantean Epoch, which was the last time the Earth was in more direct contact with the higher worlds. After that period, the Earth sunk into its darkest cycle yet the Iron Age, and humanity began to forget who they were and the intricacies of the spiritual cosmos that we are part of. We began to live in a very basic existence that became increasingly materially oriented and external. However, these teachings were retained by mystery schools and continued to be taught throughout time, becoming the basis of various religions. Thus, these cosmic teachings can be found in the Eastern traditions, Gnosticism, Esoteric Christianity, and in more detail in the modern movements like Rudolf Steiner's Anthroposophy. When we consider that the Earth is but one planet of life in a solar system of life, separated only by time and density, it makes sense that our remote viewers like Joe McMonagall and Ingo Swan saw life on Mars. In fact, once these teachings are understood, you would expect it. In reality, these conversations are not new. Stories about angels and rishis from Venus were regular accounts among advanced Eastern civilizations and initiates. In fact, they base many religious structures around the initiates that came from the Venusian sphere. Rudolf Steiner mentions Mars men and Vulcan men, and he reveals that there were archai angels from Venus that assisted man during the time of Lemuria, and that angelic humans from Mercury were a major force in the development of Atlantis. Blavatsky went into revolutionary detail of how the various planets evolved in the cosmos in her work, The Secret Doctrine. These ideas had been lost to the West until that work was published. Edgar Cayce directly spoke of beings from the outer spheres and even went into great detail about crystalline technologies that could be used to contact these advanced humans. And even rather unknown psychics spoke about visiting and even living on Mars and other lives. Our Earth, and even body, is not solid. That is an illusion. It is subject to cycles of change and development according to an all-encompassing cosmic order. In fact, all planets in our solar system are subject to the same cosmic laws as the Earth. Though they may express them a little different, it is still the same overarching structure. The other planetary spheres have slightly different forms of humanity that could be seen as expressing a different evolutionary phase. As the solar system is one interconnected system of life, 
we can actually tap into these various worlds. And in our history at certain points, these worlds have even physically interacted with the earth. In fact, the core of all spiritual tradition is understanding the spiritual planes in planetary terms. Thank you very much for joining me today. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. If you enjoy my work, please consider keeping it free and available by making a donation or becoming a patron on my website. I am totally independent and supported by you.